right, here we go. I am at the Royal BC Museum. Uh, I'm down near the archive doors trying to get away a little bit from the road noise in front of the, uh, the archivist entrance, beautiful little pond area. Um, I, uh, I had the opportunity a number of years ago to visit the third floor galleries of the Royal BC Museum. I live in Ottawa, so a trip out to Victoria is a, um, uh, was a memorable event. We had a conference here and had a chance to spend some hours uh, walking through a private uh, uh, event in the third floor gallery um, in the um, in a, a reconstruction of what was called Old Town. It was uh, where um, and what Victoria looked like uh, roughly a century and a quarter ago at the turn of the 20th century. And uh, the museum um, abruptly closed the third floor exhibits last year um, with the mandate to decolonize uh, the museum itself. I have some mixed feelings about this and it raises some questions about what a museum is supposed to be. As well as the Old Town um, exhibit on the third floor, there were um, uh, exhibits uh, related to uh, the traditional peoples of this territory. And um, from my understanding, this closure was somewhat abrupt and, uh, and happened um, without significant consultation and uh, surprised many, let's say. And I have, I do, I have mixed feelings about this because um, the exhibit was a, something of a caricature. We have a similar exhibit in the Museum of Civilization in Ottawa. Uh, what was life like a century and a half ago? What was it like for people to live? What was commerce like? Uh, what was technology like? What was clothing like? What was, uh, you know, what types of food and and, uh, and goods did people trade? Uh, what sorts of businesses were open? I think those are those all fascinating and legitimate types of, of uh, things to have in a museum. Um, at the Science and Tech Museum in Ottawa, where I live, we have exhibits of, you know, the Atari 2600 and the Commodore 64. Um, <laughs> um, and and those are just sort of facts of history. Those are things that human beings experienced. The decolonization narrative. All right. So I did my honors thesis on the Gustafson Lake standoff, which happened in BC near Hundred Mile House in 1995. Uh, up to then, it was the largest deployment of RCMP in Canadian history. And the original argument of the indigenous uh, people, the elder from Shuswap Nation, um, who was, who was uh, presiding over the ritual on this land where they believed that there was a grave of uh, Shuswap Nation people who had died due to smallpox, uh, was having conflict with, the, uh, with a rancher who claimed title and rights to the land. And along came a lawyer by the name of Bruce Clark. I think he was from New Brunswick who was a constitutional lawyer and he pointed to the Royal Proclamation of 1763 by King George that said, and this came after um, uh, the uh, Crown Loyalists uh, armed the Iroquois to fight against the Americans and another indigenous nation. And when the war was over, the Iroquois said, all right, <laughs> we now have guns. You're going to negotiate with us. And as a consequence, King George III issued a proclamation in 1763, along with a number of other proclamations, that no crown subject shall encroach upon native territory without signing treaties. But that still stands in international law, and it was enshrined in our Canadian constitution uh, once again in 1982. So it's recognized in our law, but uh, there's a difference between policy and practice. So the policy is no crown subject, shall encroach on territories, but the actual practice is that 93% of British Columbia is unceded Indigenous territory. So uh, there is some argument, or there's some question about how do we handle this? Because, I mean, I'm of Ukrainian-Russian descent, uh, Ukrainian first, by the way, and my grandparents escaped uh, uh, northern Ukraine and the border of Russia. They were more Russian um, by, their, uh, by their culture than not and escaped Stalin's and, and the, the, uh, the communist uh, um, kill squads and starvation. 
And so, you know, when I uh, moved here, first came to British Columbia in 1978 as a, as a child, I was only seven years old. Uh, my aunt and uncle lived in Richmond, BC, and it was mostly farmland still. <laughs> there was some core, but now Richmond is completely uh, colonized, let's say. It's settled. We built houses and office towers and shopping malls and bus routes and transit lanes. And, and then you look at the mix of people. Okay. Uh, when I left, when we arrived in Vancouver, we moved in 1984. It was at the beginning of the Hong Kong migration. The lease of Hong Kong was uh, up at 1999, and many of the wealthy Hong Kongese people uh, were sending children over to Canada, teenagers to be educated here, to buy real estate, and to, and to live in Canada. And that started a big surge in the BC development and housing. And since that time, Vancouver has become a cosmopolitan city, one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And since I left 20 years ago, the mix has changed. Well, those, those kids that I went to high school with, who were the same age as me, are now 50 years old. And there weren't that many 50-year-old uh, Asian people in Vancouver in the mid 80s. But now, we, uh, uh, it was a lot of kids. And now we have a full multi-generational uh, Asian culture established. Um, there are a tremendous number of uh, Mexican and Spanish people. I haven't, I don't remember ever hearing Spanish spoken so commonly as I've heard in Vancouver and in Victoria that it's since I've been here. And we have uh, South Asian and Filipino and Japanese and uh, just like incredible diversity in these cities. So at what point did colonization, colonization stop? Right? We're trying to decolonize if that really means anything. At what point did it stop? Okay, we're pointing to the European whites who came and, and stole this land, established themselves, but wave after wave of human progress and technology and, the, uh, um, and modernity itself. There was no conscious intention, not in my mind anyway, of appropriation uh, at any kind of collective scale, uh, the consequence or, or what caused the displacement um, of indigenous people was largely technology, modernity, um, the culture. Uh, I, I believe, I, I believe deeply actually, and I'm going to do a video about this, that the indigenous people have an incredible amount to teach the developed world and share in terms of their knowledge. Uh, things that we've forgotten. And there's a balance to be had. There's a medicine to be learned. And, uh, and, and I believe it's incredibly valuable. And I, I don't believe that there's any way to single out what this colonization is like when did it start was it james cook who arrived in vancouver island maybe was it uh was it the first waves that came out before the railroad you know vancouver itself and coal harbor was only a couple thousand people in 1880 and when the railway completed the population of vancouver shot up by thousands of percent in just a couple of years and it hasn't stopped, it hasn't stopped in a century and a, and a half, this growth. And well, can we point anywhere to say, this is colonization, or this is where European colonization ended. And now everybody after that, all the newcomers, Hong Kong Chinese, mainland Chinese, Filipino, uh, Japanese, Australian, Mexicans, South, Indian, South Asians, Hindus. Um, I see a lot of uh, Muslims now, where hardly any Muslims I saw uh, or noticed before in Vancouver and and Victoria. And uh, you know, I live in Ottawa, and we have a, a fairly significant Muslim population. So it's common for me to uh, hear um, languages like uh, uh, Persian languages and. and uh, and different dialects. I, I don't recognize them as well as I recognize Chinese dialects because I grew up in Vancouver. But uh, I mean, where does where does European colonization stop? And and where does where does human progress pick up?
And can we draw a line and say, okay, everything, everything up to here is the fault of the Europeans, but after that, we get a free pass. My name is Shannon Douglas. This is While We Were Asleep. Make sure you like and subscribe.